Hey guys, it's Mike here, and in the past I've talked about the best Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super fan theories, as well as others throughout the course of the series. Now, I want to kind of flip that around on its head, do a 180 if you will, and talk about the absolute worst Dragon Ball Super, and maybe Dragon Ball fan theory ever made. And I'm sure there's plenty of them. As a matter of fact, I actually went over and asked everybody on my community tab exactly uh, which one is the worst using a picture of Goku that definitely looks very intelligent now, doesn't it? It's, uh, that's Goku in Dragon Ball Super if he fell on his head again. <laughs> now, uh, we got a lot of them. So I don't know if I'll be going through all of them here today. You can't even see that. 474. Uh, get out of the way, Mike, in the bottom left corner, not in the top right where my cards usually are. But either way, before I get into this, I'm going to start with my, well, members on the channel on the Discord server right now. Everyone who has joined as a member on the channel can join the Discord server, and that's in turn where I go, and I, well, will give them priority. So let's start with all of that right now. The first one from Jolteon Surge, somebody who helped to uh, hook me up with uh, my uh, recent reviews of the Sparking Zero game, that you could see my live reviews of that in depth into the game, and also a comparison of that and Fighters on my channel. But that being said, he said, Toriyama being pressured by fans to continue or change the story, like Gohan being the main character or the story continuing after Frieza. So, Yes, that actually is not true. It is a rumor that was made up uh, by fans over the years who claimed that Toriyama was threatened and pressured into Gohan no longer being the main character and that he was threatened into changing it back to Goku and everything like that. That never actually happened. It's like uh, Jonathan Frakes said in Fact or Fiction. It's not true. We made it all up. And that's the case here because it never happened. And it, the thing is that Toriyama, there are points where you can argue he definitely wanted to end the story. Uh, he never said that he was going to end the story of Frieza, by the way. That's another uh, thing that you could just read on Konsenshu, for instance, Konsenshu.com, uh, which is a database for uh, legitimate Dragon Ball information and all the interviews and there's like an ending guide on there and never once did he say he would end it there. So all of that's BS made up by uh, fans who want to, you know, seem like they have secret information nobody knows on the internet, but in fact, well, they're uh, full of, uh, well, you know what. So uh, Lord Frieza, hey, he's in my chat right now. Yeah, he said the theory about how all the angels and gods of destruction are evil and grand priest is their leader and they will overthrow zeno hey did you read my fan fiction but no um yeah so that's one thing that was going on especially in the tournament to power uh which i feel like maybe somebody had mentioned at one point here but there's that one scene where uh daishinkan like smiles at goku it looked like after uh they erased that one universe and the tournament to power and everyone's like oh my gosh what's gonna happen but apparently they weren't actually evil. I mean, you could argue maybe they are evil because they just make the mortals their playthings and erase things. That's like, who gave you the authority to do this anyway? Might makes right. That's a whole thing I could do a video on in the future. But either way, none of this ever came to pass. It's just kind of fans' uh, theories running wild, like Hulk Hogan in the 1980s. Hulkamania, as it were, with the 24-inch pythons, brother. Um, Phantom 89, the bomb and phantoms. And he said, I don't know if it's a theory, but what about Goku not knowing what a kiss is? <laughs> so yeah, and that's one of the things. It seems either more like a mistranslation or something that is meant to be a joke, but a lot of people took it literally based upon what I've heard many fans, whether they be Japanese fans or fans who speak Japanese over the years have said, wherein Goku actually does know what a kiss is, but he doesn't actually understand, you know, why Trunks would basically do the baby bird thing to Mai with the sensu bean. <laughs> so as a result, 
what occurred there is that the misunderstanding was the joke of Vegeta being like, wait, wait a second, you're married. You must have kissed your wife. And so a lot of people are like, oh, Goku and Super is so dumb that he's never even kissed his own wife. But it's like, I think it actually was meant to be a joke. It's kind of like Bulma saying that she was actually 39 when she's supposed to be 42 or something like that in uh, the Battle of Gods movie. It's meant to be a joke, but it's not really... Uh, executed well enough to where we're able to get that. Either that or it just makes more sense in the original language and context. So then uh, I believe actually, as a matter of fact, uh, this was somebody else mentioning that. So uh, let's see, all the, the shipping and fanfare, uh, fan fiction, like what if Goku had a kid with this person? Yeah, I mean, that's basically Dragon Ball AF with like Zycor, right? So I don't really care for that. Goku, uh, you know, wants to get it on with Kale and Khalifa. It's like, come on, man. Like, he's he's married. And even even when he was in the afterlife, there's no indication that he ever, well, had any other instances of uh, romance. Uh, so Goku having CTE from Fighting Boo, huh, that's certainly an interesting one. Future Trunks in Super is different because of the hair color, and he's not the same Trunks. I've heard that a lot but he actually is supposed to be the same future Trunks from the Dragon Ball Z anime, the Dragon Ball manga, the same one who came to the main timeline from the future Trunks storyline. A lot of people will be like, well, that's a proof. That's a different Trunks, and that must be a different Trunks, and Super is a different timeline. It's like, no. All the contradictions are not an indication of a different timeline, but rather they're an indication of, well, uh, different continuity, if you want to say, or at the very least, they're an indication that they didn't put as much effort into uh, thinking about the logical inconsistencies as much as, well, some other uh, individuals might in the in the fan base. And now also, Android 17 wished back all the universes, even the ones destroyed before a tournament to power. I mean, they never confirmed that on screen, but yeah, like that's something a lot of people are like, that's going to be a big plot point, and then never comes up. So it doesn't really seem like it. So that is the members who talked about that. Let's get into some more uh, of that on the, ch on the channel. But before then, I do actually have in the chat, so you know, I'm doing all this live uh, on, the, on the channel, and we had a super chat <laughs> sent in from Xavier uh, to God, one of my uh, members as well, where he said that his theory is that Super being good. I mean, super being canon. <laughs> yeah, so I actually did a whole video called Why Dragon Ball Super Isn't Canon that you guys can see on my channel. I don't know if I'll remember to do it, but let's just do this for, uh, you know, top right corner over there. That way I'll remember to edit it in. Maybe the only card in the whole video. But yeah, like the whole thing, me explaining kind of like how canon works in Dragon Ball and basically that you can argue it's not part of the same canon or continuity as Toriyama's manga and everything along those lines. So let me do one quick last refresh. And okay, so let's go here with the top one from <laughs> Pisa Chit. I know what you're saying. You're doing the Scarface pronunciation. But you said, uh, funny uh, Sonic one too. I still remember the Hit's clone in the Tournament of Power and how badly Hit was done dirty. I definitely agree with that. I mean, Goku really uh, screwed over Hit in that fight. Because the thing is, like, Hit literally had just saved Goku and from being eliminated by somebody else. And then, he, and then he's like, oh, you know, we could team up and beat Jiren, but I'm not going to do that. So you can just fight him on your own, Hit. And then Hit gets eliminated because Goku just didn't want to help him which is like one of the biggest D moves that Goku does in all of the Dragon Ball franchise, right? Like this guy literally just saved him from Erasure. Uh, his universe would not exist anymore if he didn't help Goku. And then, yeah, that's what happened. Good going, Goku. That was, that was really messed up, to be fair. <laughs> Next one was Jiren's family not being killed by El Hermano to be one of the dumbest things I've ever read. That's true. We all know that El Hermano is uh, Jiren from the 10 trillionth timeline, right? Where he has a gigantic bubble head. So yeah, um, I mean, there. I, I probably will see another one, but there have been ones like, you know, Jiren, uh, his family was killed by Goku Black, or he was killed by Boo or something like that. They never explained who the evildoer was. I mean, Jiren's backstory is historically really, well, 
bare bones to say the least. In the anime version, they don't even explain what his motivation is. But in the manga version, you know, at least we got something, which is better than nothing. That the Grand Priest is evil and they were going to get an arc about stopping him. Yeah, I mean, I guess it would have been better than him basically just doing nothing for the most part. Like, he helped build the ring. But yeah, like, Grand Priest is one of those characters. It's like, he's the number one strongest fighter or he's on the top five. But then it's like, well, why do we never really get anything with him at all? But I had already kind of touched on that. You know, he, he just kind of is there. He's really strong, but then he just doesn't get surpassed because that's kind of a lot of the strongest characters in super though they still haven't surpassed beerus or weiss or anyone it's like makes the scaling feel really stagnant in modern dragon ball that goku black is future goten <laughs> yeah uh that was a big thing too that like somehow goten not only was alive in the future which obviously he wasn't but not just that but like you know Goku Black was like a brainwashed version of him. I mean, there were theories about how Goku Black was also going to be like, you know, um, what is it? Could it be like Goku from another timeline that Zamasu raised to be evil, kind of like Kang did with Iron Man in, uh, in the comics and... You know, I did like a joke video talking about if he was uh, Goku Jr. from the end of GT. I like how stupid that was, you know, and it's just like, no... It was just Zamas who stole his body, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's like, eh, all right. So, yeah, I mean, Frost having Cooler's fifth form, Hits Clone, yeah, I, I don't know if I actually went too in-depth into that, but yeah, like, people people were convinced that Hit didn't really lose and he had a clone, and the same thing with Tien. It's just like, they just wanted so badly for him to still be there because of just how poorly the writing was for his character in that arc because he barely, you know, he got beat up by Dispo, and then he, like, you know, couldn't even stay in the ring long enough to be involved in the climax of the story, despite being one of the coolest new characters in the franchise. And, you know, it just is really disappointing. So I could see why that was the case. Goku and Jiren fighting the angels, Universe 7 losing. That wasn't really a theory, though. It was more like, you know... Some of these things are more speculation. Honestly, if Universe 7 lost and Universe 6 had to win for them and wish them back or something, it probably would have been a way more interesting story because we already knew Universe 7 would win. I mean, they're still there at the end of Z, so that's super in a nutshell. Uh, let's see. Goku Black being Kakarot from another timeline who didn't bump his head. Yeah. Uh, that Vegito doesn't take his fight seriously because he does have plans. He makes to get the job done to rescue Gohan and the others. Yeah, but that plan didn't make any sense. Like, how would he know he could get absorbed and shrink down into Boo's body, but without actually being absorbed? And I did a whole video about that on my channel and how the plan itself is kind of a plot hole because it makes no sense. It just so happened to work. It's like Vegeta came up with that plan according to, uh, it was like Vegeta's plan. Vegeta's plan. But it was, it didn't make any sense. The entire Dragon Ball series being Goku's coma dream. Yeah, I mean, that's been like a big thing in a lot of fandoms and franchises over the years where it's like, oh, Harry Potter actually was in a car crash when he was a kid with his parents, just like his his aunt and uncle told him. And he was in a coma the whole time. And he's going to wake up at the end when everyone's chanting Harry, Harry. And then he's going to be like, oh, it was all just a dream, you know, which... Uh, to be fair, it did almost seem like that was going to happen in the last book, but then it didn't. So, you know, that happens a lot of series and it would be terrible because it usually that just like ruins everything because it makes everything feel worthless because it was all a dream. Basically Buffy all over again. So anyway, uh, Vegeta having a legendary Super Saiyan in the Broly movie when his hair turned green. That was still weird. Like, why did they just randomly throw in those flourishes of green and white or silver when goku's powering up people are like he tapped in an ultra instinct or vegeta went super saiyan green it's like no it's just like a weird artistic change for no reason <laughs> and uh yeah that would have let's be fair though yeah vegeta's super saiyan green would actually be super saiyan money cha-ching you know so uh there's that because they've made a lot of it in that movie but broly's the only one who gets the green hair and outfit and aura and stuff like that uh, Hits clone. Yep. Broly was piloting Megetta. Yeah, I actually made a funny video about that. Because uh, <laughs> a lot of people thought that Broly was in Megetta or Broly was in the robot for Universe um, 
nine or whatever it was. I forget to be fair. And yeah, it's so stupid. Like the, the Broly fans were like, trust me, Broly's good. Broly's here. He's in a robot. It's like, oh boy. And then he showed up for real. I mean, first they had girl Broly and then they just were like, let's just do real Broly. That Shenron is really Oolong transformed in that Oolong had, wait, what? I've never even heard this one. That's, that makes my brain hurt. How did Oolong wish on himself for panties? That's weird. Hmm. Super Saiyan God being stronger than Super Saiyan Blue. Oh yeah, I just basically it was everybody's favorite color at the time and until we got more anime. Yeah, a lot of people for a very long time and probably even now still think that Super Saiyan Blue is weaker than Super Saiyan God in that Super Saiyan God was the true God form. And that's why it was the seven compared to Beerus's 10 as according to Toriyama's scale from the first movie that totally is still an effect guy, trust me. And, uh, you know, basically that, oh, the form that Goku got in that first movie is way stronger than the other God form he gets later on and, go, and Blue and everything like that. To be fair, I do think that there's a very strong a uh, possibility that the multiplier was stronger the first time he used it from the ritual. But I don't think that afterward uh, that blue is ever weaker or that Goku's blue power in ROF is weaker than his god power when he fought Beerus. It's just the fact that, well, uh, he absorbed most of the power, so the multiplier after that wouldn't be as big, which is pretty much evidenced by every single time he used it because he doesn't really seem to get that much stronger than Super Saiyan even 2. But uh, that's that's a video I discussed on my channel about um, if the God boost was retconned and if Super Saiyan God, another video, is actually stronger than Fusion. At the time it was, but then again, you got to remember, <clears throat> I'll do a whole video about the Fusion multiplier at some point. Fusion is based on the maximum powers as far as I'm concerned, of the individuals at the time. That's why base Gogeta and base Vegeta would be stronger than the Blues, but why Super Saiyan God would be stronger than uh, Fusion in general in that movie. Uh, the Evil Angels theory based on two smirks. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. And the Beerus is holding back theorem to try and justify. Yeah, exactly. I kind of just touched on this, but yeah. So many people still are like, yeah, but the, the Toriyama said that, you know, Goku was a 7 and Beerus was a 10 and Whis was a 15. And that must still be true because Toriyama said it's like, if that was true, then they still would, you know, they would have surpassed Beerus in resurrection f you know like it's and then especially afterward kaioken so people were making up nonsensical theories for years like how kaioken blue only uh increased the uh multiplier on goku's regular key and his god key was like a different reservoir of power and like everything they could possibly do to justify the fact that goku had not surpassed beerus but i mean if that's true let's let's think about it like this guy's using common sense if that's true, then it means that as strong as Goku and Vegeta and everyone have gotten at this point, uh, and they're still weaker than Beerus, then that means that they haven't even gotten 1.5 times as strong in the entirety of Dragon Ball Super. Which for conservative power scalers, it's like, well, of course, I mean, they've you know, one power level over the last one is still a big difference when you're at them, you know, but like, imagine that, like, um, Goku in the tournament of power when he's mastered ultra instinct is like 1.01 times stronger than when he fought Beerus, like how insane that stuff would be. So I don't know. I mean, you never know it's dragon ball. They could say something crazy like that, but I definitely don't agree. Oh boy, this one. That Chi Chi had an affair with Yamcha, got pregnant, and then asked the dragon to turn Gohan into a Saiyan and hide the affair. I feel like this part is probably just made up by maybe this guy or, or someone else. I haven't heard that one, but yeah, a lot of people are like, oh, Gohan has the same haircut as, as Yamcha in multiple arcs. They look really similar, especially um, future Gohan, who has the same uh, scars and everything too, right? So he's probably the real son of Yamcha, and Yamcha and Chi-Chi had an affair. I mean, remember in the first arc where uh, Yamcha pretended he actually had a crush on Chi-Chi and stuff, and it's like, you know, that's obviously really dumb. I mean, I guess the whole having him turned into a Saiyan thing to hide the affair is like... 
also, you know, like a way for them to explain how stupid that is. But no, that, that, that's definitely one of the dumbest theories ever heard in this franchise. That's for sure. That anime girl, when she made the Saiyan curse, I honestly don't even know what that is, to be to be honest. I've never seen that video, and I have zero interest in ever watching any of that uh, content. So, uh, yeah, so you guys can let me know how bad that is, because I don't even know what it is or what it entails. Goku Blackbeam, Goten, Z Broly having infinite power. Boy, there's that one all over again. You know, there was like a 12-year-old kid who they asked him, what superhero would you like to be? And he said, I want to be Broly because his power is maximum. And for some reason, even though that was just like a little kid's drawing, uh, and it was obviously like not legitimate, it became like a thing that people actually believed on the internet for a long time, because people sometimes will take memes seriously. And yeah, then there was also the idea that like Broly has infinite power and that his power just infinitely grows like the Hulks or more. And it's just like nobody could ever beat Broly. And the only reason he lost is because he got punched in a stab wound and some other nonsensical things that are never even said in the movie, especially in the Japanese. And I did another video, you know, I did a video that was one of my first big videos on the channel for Dragon Ball, which is uh, why Broly isn't that strong where I explained why Broly does not have infinite power, and that's all like a misconception. And then I did another video recently, how much power did Broly gain between Legendary Super Saiyan, the first Broly movie, and then Broly's second coming, the second. And I also reanalyzed how strong he was and what the movie said in the Japanese, using explicit dialogue from that. And yeah, nowhere do they ever say he has infinite power. At the most, you could say that he has infinite stamina and his energy replenishes itself and his body can't contain it, so he has to expel it. That's what overflowing means in his case. So yeah, I definitely don't agree. I also don't agree with like silly things like, oh, when they shared their energy, Goku got a thousand times stronger. It's like, no. And it's like, oh, Broly only lost because his power blew up in himself. It's like, no, that's not true either. <laughs> so yeah, somebody brings up the curse. I don't even know what it is, so maybe it's bad. Um, the mysterious fighter from Universe 11 is actually Bardock that survived and got transported to the future. Oh, God. Uh, I'm trying to think, who's this mysterious fighter from Universe 11? Oh, was it supposed to be Topo before he took the... before? So the thing that's funny about that, too, though, is that when you look at, like the early episodes and the next episode preview and stuff, originally Toei had drawn the cloaked figure with Belmod to look like Jiren because they were under the impression that that would be Jiren and that um, Jiren, they gave him a whole backstory because Toriyama didn't give them one for Jiren uh, about, you know, like the justice and everything kind of like with Topo. And then it's like Toriyama's like, no, he's not supposed to have a backstory like that. You know, he's supposed to be more like this. So they end up changing it to Topo instead of Jiren that uh, Goku fights in the animation. And they went from there. So that's one of those things that was a change, kind of like um, Gohan having Super Saiyan 2 hair originally when he's in Battle of Gods uh, in the trailer, and then they change it to him being Ultimate. Even though that kind of lines up more with what Toriyama has with Resurrection F, where uh, Gohan can barely even turn into a Super Saiyan, so the regression was already happening in his power by Battle of Gods, so it kind of lines up more with Super Saiyan 2 than Ultimate. Or, of course, the infamous uh, Saiya power or whatever, where Goku goes Super Saiyan to fight against Freeze and the Ginyu Force. And then Toei was like, wait a sec, he doesn't need to go Super Saiyan to fight the Ginyu Force. And they, like, changed his hair black. But then his aura is still yellow and his hair still spikes up like Super Saiyan. So, yeah, a um, whole lot of can of worms. So I'm guessing that's what they're referring to with the Mysterious Warrior, which was uh, revealed to be Topo. Goku Black was the one who killed Jiren's friends. Hey, uh, I actually just talked about that. Um, but thank you, Maya. Uh, let's see. People were convinced that Frieza was going to be the new anti-hero of the series after the tournament to power. Oh, boy. Yeah, I, I don't think that Frieza, an evil genocidal maniac, would be an anti-hero. But then again, Piccolo and, and, and Vegeta were. So, I don't know. I feel like Frieza, it's not in his character for him to, him to be particularly heroic. Unless you count him blowing up a planet full of evil pirates who genocide people as being good or heroic. Depends on your point of view. From a certain point of view. 
<laughs> uh, the entire franchise is Goku's coma dream after his head was hit as a baby from Dan, uh, Daniel Santiago Gortado. I already mentioned that. That Goku died on Namek, but he got revived by the wish. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So that's a big one. A lot of people think that Goku uh, died on Namek when Frieza smashed him into the ground and that he was wished back by the Dragon Balls. But this is not true. I don't know if I ever did dedicated video about this. I might have talked about it in my misconceptions video on the channel. I have a lot of videos in referencing. I'm not making any cards other than the first one I pointed. So with this one, yeah, um, this doesn't work because first off, Goku didn't die. Like uh, in the manga and the anime, it's never said he did. You know, you can argue maybe he was unconscious. In the anime, they had a whole filler sequence where Gohan goes to fight Frieza and all this other stuff, which never happened in the manga. Just kind of stretch everything out. I mean, Gohan's like, I have to avenge my father and defeat Frieza and keep him on the planet so he can die with the explosion. I'll sacrifice myself. And it's like, because he couldn't sense Goku's energy, but... You know, in the manga, Goku just kind of flies back up out of the water where he got smashed into the rocks. In the anime, like, there was a lava explosion, liquid hot magma, you know, from Austin Powers. And uh, then, then he comes out of that. So, no, he didn't die because he couldn't have been wished back with the Earth Dragon Balls. Remember, everyone on Namek who got wished back were done so with the Earth Dragon Balls, not with the Namekian, because... Uh, Grand Elder was dead, so they couldn't use the Earth Dragon Balls. So they used the the or the Namekian Dragon Balls. So they used the Earth Dragon Balls to wish back the Grand Elder and Dende and everybody else. And then Dende went and uh, flew to use Namekian Dragon Balls, which were then used uh, to send everybody but Goku and Frieza to Earth. So Goku had already been wished back in the Saiyan Saga. With the Earth Dragon Balls, he couldn't be wished back again according to the rules, so it doesn't make any sense, and so that theory is incorrect. Farmer with a shotgun is weaker than Blue Kaioken Obama. Uh, okay, Blue Kaioken Obama is weaker than Farmer Shotgun. Uh, sure, why not? Uh, <laughs> I have my own dumb theory, okay? Here we go. Goku would be a far better destroyer than Vegeta. Just imagine Goku being a near-carbon copy of Beerus, never doing his job. I mean, Beerus does his job. We see him eradicate multiple plants at the start of Dragon Ball Super. So, yeah, I don't agree. Uh, and not just that, but I honestly don't think it's in either Vegeta or Goku's character to become a Hakaishin. I don't like that direction they've taken them. Where, you know, some people are like, well, Goku's going to be more like an angel. Beerus or Vegeta's going to be a god of destruction. It's like both their characters have moved on from this idea. Goku never would want to erase entire species of people and, you know, stuff. And also Vegeta, like, Vegeta isn't like that anymore. So it doesn't make any sense for his character to want to be a god of destruction and to erase civilizations and stuff based upon some arbitrary objective so i've never been a fan of that and i don't think that either of them should be either of those roles i think that they should just go in the direction that we saw at the end of z and also in well more like gt with uh, vegeta being a family man talking more about this fan theory from that uh youtuber i never watched it tori bot is zeno's father i mean you never know uh tori so the funny thing is though i found this out from derek padula Toribot is actually called Robo Toriyama, and he was introduced in um, Dr. Slump. Toriyama existed in that universe, and so Toriyama told Senbei Noromaki, who is Dr. Slump, that he wanted him to build a robot assistant for him who could do most of the manga for him. And so he, he built a robot, or Robo Toriyama, uh, who we then now call Toribot for the most part, but his name was technically that. So we don't really see Toriyama aside from like maybe one cameo or two on screen in uh, the manga in Dragon Ball, but we do see uh, Toribot in the early Dragon Ball. And then I'm trying to remember if he shows up at all later. He shows up in the manga in the Buu Saga um, when he uh, he has like an out of universe thing where Krillin is like, wait a second, what's Toriyama trying to pull? Is, is he photocopying these shots when uh, Goten and Trunks are fusing? And then Toribot shows up and he's like, Mr. Editor, you don't have to pay me for these pages. <laughs> So that's a really funny thing that never made it into the anime, unfortunately. They could have been like, hey, is Toei trying to copy and paste these scenes? And then, you know, you could have had something like that. But 
That base Goku and everyone compares with him can threaten the macrocosm, exert more power than Super Saiyan God Goku. I mean, I did a whole video about whether the boost has been retconned. The thing is that that could very well be the case. I mean, a lot of people don't want to believe it. They want to believe that Super Saiyan God's boost has been retconned and that, you know, Goku didn't truly absorb the power as temporary, etc., etc. But then there's the fact that Goku and Vegeta in their base can stomp Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks with ease without even powering up, and that Goku in his base form fights Beerus, who's dressed as Manaka, and Beerus is saying that he's getting a better, enjoyable fight out of him, the base Goku, that is, than he did against... Um, <clears throat> Goku and Battle of Gods. So there's a lot of in-universe evidence that suggests that it was not retconned. It's just that none of them ever do this eh, instead of this, causing things to not be exploded immediately because they're all stronger than God at that point, the Super Saiyan God, rather. You know, it's the same thing. It's like, oh, Kaba would be able to beat Gogeta. You know, that I wonder if that would be on here because that's one of the dumbest theories I've heard because, oh, Kaba... Uh, He's stronger than Super Saiyan God. And so if he went, uh, instead of, uh, he could blow up the macrocosm. And Gogeta can't do that because Gogeta only ever went, uh, instead of, uh. Maybe, maybe he's just a better fighter. <laughs> and that's the reason he didn't do that. I mean, remember, Gogeta was stronger than a guy who was doing the exact same thing by standing still. Menacingly. When Blue was first revealed, people thought it was equal. Yeah, I've already talked about that. Super doesn't invalidate the GT canon. The Z ending hasn't happened yet because, and the goes full theory, which I never bothered to read. Hmm. But I'm not going to bother to think about that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing is, Toei at any point can just be like, oh yeah, GT still happens in the same timeline as Super. I mean, we know that GT is canon to at least the Z anime because the fact that the last episode, Dragon Ball Z, had a next episode preview which led directly into Dragon Ball GT, where, to where Goku introduces it and says, stay tuned for next week, and then it began. So, you know, say what you will about GT, uh, and whether it's canned or not, it's at least canned to its own continuity. Checkmate, atheists, but no. Gohan Blanco. Oh, wait. Yeah, apparently that wasn't a fan theory after all. It just happened one arc later. Well, multiple arcs later, if you count the, the manga continuity, which the anime and movies and stuff usually don't. <laughs> Yamcha is Gohan's dad. Yep, I already talked about that. Uh, another one saying that, the Saiyan curse again. Goku fusing with the seven Black Star Dragon Balls and create the legendary Super Saiyan 5. I feel like that's something that Toyotaro wrote in AF. Uh, Super Saiyan Infinity Krillin, anybody? Let's see. Uh, all these theories. Well, actually, it's not a bad theory. Insert bad theory. I mean, welcome to the Dragon Ball fandom. Back Tingles makes good sense. Oh, boy. Yeah. So I know that, like... Um, I know that there have been videos over time by people being like, well, yeah, it makes sense because, you know, it ties into the idea of Ki and Chi and Chakra and, you know, the different aspects. It's like, it, it's, it's still dumb. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter if it makes sense in, uh, you know, outside lore and everything, you know, you already invalidated Super Saiyan enough or made it like a joke enough with like Goten and Trunks doing it. And then you had to make up like a... S cells and a lot of other in-universe explanations for how they can turn Super Saiyan easily, you know, their tailless prodigies, etc., etc. You know, and that already kind of diminishes Super Saiyan. Khalifa just being like, oh yeah, just show me it, and then I'll like make my back tingle, and then I'll do the same thing, is just it's just really dumb. So I, I don't care how you can explain it out of universe, in universe, I think it just it just kind of made things even more of a joke than they already were. I mean, I understand why they did it, but you didn't need to do that. You could have just had them train off screen like everyone else in Super getting big boosts. <laughs> Piccolo piping Chi-Chi. Okay. Um, Fidel being a better mother than Chi-Chi. Evidence is hun hey, Piccolo's hundreds of plushies. I, I don't get it. Um, worst theory I heard in someone in the comment section saying Cabbage will win and bring back Universe 7 is their wish. I guess if I guess if the tournament to power was made of Gogeta's, then yeah, he would win. <laughs> that Gohan got shafted because of Goku's popularity. Yeah, and again, Gohan was actually the most popular character at the time that he defeated Cell. They ran polls in Japan of character popularity, and Gohan was by far the most popular. So more proof that that's BS. Goten Black and Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is Super Saiyan God. Uh, so it seems like a lot of them are just kind of 
the same things over and over. Monaka actually being powerful. I mean, that's, you know, the series kind of led us to believe. Gogeta can last for 30 minutes in Vegito since it's happened. It's just faulty fusion, unstable. It is crazy that Super has almost made, a seem, it made it seem like Vegito is a worse fusion now that lasts for a shorter, even though it's supposed to be permanent. But, you know, Daima has its own explanation about that. So yeah, that GT, Super is going to overwrite the ending of Z, Blasphemy. Yeah, uh, Super can't overwrite the ending of Z because the fact that Z is the primary, con or the Dragon Ball manga is the prime continuity, and anything that contradicts it just means it's not a part of that continuity. So that's a whole other can of worms, but overall, there is a lot of different uh, theories that you could see here. Many of them the same, but you know, you do have some interesting ones like uh, talking about Trunks getting Super Saiyan Rage from getting beaten up by Super Saiyan Blue and somehow absorbing God Key. That's really dumb too. Super Goku, the best version of Goku. <laughs> it's more theory, but you can see a lot of people responded, so I'm sure they got triggered. I don't know why, because everyone should know that's wrong. But yeah, with that being said, guys, what do you think is the dumbest or the worst fan theory of Dragon Ball Super? Let me know down below. Thank you to all my members. Thank you for everyone who put this in here. I'm sure you guys can go into this community post. Let me know. And thank you to the chat watching when I record this live. And make sure to stick around because there's a lot more to come in the future. Y'all, you better subscribe.